Welcome back. Today it's all about wrapping the building and installing the windows and doors. And the first thing we're going to do is install this this door right here on the side. This is an Anderson E-Series door. Um, it does have a, it is glass with, um, with cladding. And the idea was that these windows and doors would match my, my metal on my roof as close as possible. And actually, I was pretty pleased when I, you know, standing back and looking at them, I can't tell the difference in the color. Let me know what you think when you, when you see them. Anyway, right here, we, uh, we basically get this door, and at the same time, we're, uh, we're trying to um, basically finish up this wrapping. And right here, it's pretty high up there. That's like, that's like he's up about 18 feet on that corner right there. And... Um, we end up uh, we end up using scaffolding and the tool cat and this extension ladder. I should be holding that ladder right right now, having them up that high. But right there, you can see I'm unboxing the door, and at the same time, he's uh, trying to get this. Um, we're we're going to try to work our way around this building, sealing it up with the house wrap and also installing the windows and doors just work our way around right there you can see that's an Anderson door pretty nice pretty good quality I have to admit I'm pretty happy with them these are Anderson's higher end series and um, all my windows I did awning windows I like awning windows I think they're I think they're pretty cool they just they open from the bottom up and uh, yeah, I like those. Anyway, the way I install windows and doors is um, like on a door, the door we're doing right there, I use Jiffy Seal, usually six or nine inch Jiffy Seal. Um, I'll, put, I'll put one up each side and then basically put one across the top and then wrap the Tyvek on the top over that Jiffy Seal. And then I'll also silicone um, all the screw holes and also screw, I'll silicone the flange um, just for a little added protection. You don't really need to do that. It's not code or anything, but I, I'm just, I, it's a habit. So I've been doing it for years that way and it seems to work really good. This door had some, um, had a couple of these plastic pieces sticking out where the, the locks were. So I had to do a little bit of extra work to get this door to fit in there. We ended up having to um, basically mortise out a couple little slots for these uh, for the locking systems because they stuck out a little bit further than I was anticipating. I only allowed about a half inch for this door, or wait, about an inch, half inch on each side for shimming, and. Um, yeah, it turned out I needed to mark and cut this little section. Once we get the door all installed, it was on to the window. And this side window is a four foot by four foot. And at this point we start using the scaffolding and we got adjustable legs to level out the scaffolding. What I like to do on the windows is basically what I do is I put Jiffy Seal across the bottom first, then I put a, a pan um, on the inside of the window and fold it down onto that bottom piece, and then I put two side pieces on, and then it's time to put the window up there. Once I get the window up in place, then one guy stays outside and holds it, and then I go in the inside using shims and make sure the reveal around the window in, inside the opening is even. And once I get once I get the reveal, then it's just time to screw it all off. And basically what we do is we screw put a screw in every hole and then we put a jiffy seal across the top underneath the Tyvek. And once the, once that jiffy seal is across the top, then we will um, silicone all the bolt hole, all the screw holes, and and the uh, flange. 
Right here he's putting a piece across the top. Then he'll fold that tie back down over the top of it and tape that. Now we're also, as we work our way around this building, we're taping all the seams of the, the house wrap. Any, any little spots that um, have a hole in them or anything, we use Tyvek tape and tape them. And right there you can see he's siliconing them. Siliconing all the screw holes. That's probably overkill, but it makes me feel good. And it's just the way I've been doing it for like 25 years and it seems to, um, seems to work pretty good so I think the the tie back has has been the hardest part because of the height of this building and also um, the times when we a couple times when we were trying to get some of this tie back on the um, it it got windy and started like I started wrapping the bottom of it by myself and it was crazy all of a sudden the wind would come up and man it's it's like you got a um, um you know a giant umbrella that's just taken off right there we got door and window done on the side of the building we still have to come back to that side and do some taping because i can i noticed we missed a few spots with the with the seams i like to tape all the seams but so far, yeah, this side's going good. Door and window installed, and we'll work our way around to the back. I like the look of the back of the house with all the windows in it. I thought that had a really nice look to it. Right here, we're adding to the scaffolding. Here's our first rear window. These windows are also awning windows. They're two foot. They're Anderson. They're all Anderson windows. This is a um, two foot by four foot window. And like I said, the back of the house is about, uh, let's see, what is it, 12, about 14 feet to the underside of the, the truss right there. I haven't decided if I'm going to make a flashing for the tops of these windows and the door, because these particular Anderson windows seem to have their own flashing already on them. Um, I'm going to take a look at that a little closer later on and see if I need to have some custom flashings made before I put my siding on. Right there you can see I'm on the inside of the building shimming it and then he goes ahead and screws it all off just like the other window. Another piece of Jiffy Seal up under the tie back. And down the road we go. Right here I'm going to attempt to lift them up with the bobcat but that turned out to be a little sketchy. I was a little worried about the window, so we didn't do that. We do it this time, but then we didn't do it again after that. It was too, um, it's easier just to hand them up. Right there, he's on the third window. And you can see, you can see those two in the, that he just did look really good, nice and solid. And we're taping and sealing up all the outside home wrap as we go with the scaffolding. Yeah, we didn't end up doing that anymore. That, the, that was just a little too sketchy trying to drag it off the forks. They don't really lift up high enough. The tool cat has been handy though. I've been uh, I use the tool cat every day, um, and it's just been a great piece of machinery to have on the on our little homestead here. Right there, you can see him getting it all screwed off. We almost did all the windows in one day. You, we could have, but we, I think uh, we were a little tired. So we ended up getting, um, there's a total of 10 windows and one door. And we ended up getting um, seven eight windows done and one door and also wrapping quite a bit so we we wrapped all the way around the side and finished um 
Like I said, we finished eight windows and one door in this day. I think it's important to make sure you tape all your seams. Um, it, it helps a lot, helps keep the wind from getting under the Tyvek and making a mess of it. Especially, you know, if, you, if you're not doing your siding right away, you know, this is basically, this is going to be exposed to the weather quite a bit. My job was basically to get the windows and get them handed up, make sure he had all the material he needed up there, and then what I would do is go around the inside and shim the reveal. The, imp the important part about shimming on the inside is basically you want your frame or your window to be even around, around the whole opening so that when you, you know, if you're going to finish off your garage with drywall, when you put the drywall in, it'll be, the reveal around the window will be the same. So that's kind of the reason for that. The ground on the outside of my building right now is not very level. Um, I've been trying to get uh, guys in here bringing me DG and gravel and stuff, but no one's been available for a while, so. I think they just quit, a lot of them just quit working in the winter, they go and do something different. But right now it's springtime has started, so I should be able to get the outside of the building. Um, get a bunch of DG laid down and, and grade. Just start doing some grading pretty soon. Right there you can see he's finishing up the fourth window, I believe. The fourth, fourth rear window. I thought these windows, actually I thought they had a nice look to them. They're up really high. So they're basically at, uh, I think they're about 10 foot off the ground inside the garage. So it allows me to still get the light. Like even if I have stuff stacked on the inside of the garage, those windows are still high enough where it gives me good, good light coming in. I don't really block them with anything in there. And I think it gives it a nice look from the back of the building. The back faces the National Forest. Um, which is nice. I'm really close to the National Forest here. Both, actually, both of my properties back up to the National Forest, so I don't have any neighbors behind me. These windows, like I said, are Anderson E-Series. They're pretty well made, I must admit. I, I'm used to using good windows. Um, I think that's one place where you don't want to, you don't want to skimp out on windows and doors. You want to try to get the best quality you can. This is the first time that I've actually used Anderson though. Um, there was another window company that I used for many years that had really high quality. And um, these are similar in quality. I'm actually very impressed with these Anderson windows. Here you can see we're on our sixth window going across there. and. Like I said, my and the wind is right here. It's going crazy. You know, we're trying to get, we're trying to wrap the house as we go, and um, yeah, we're running into a lot of trouble with the wind. And the wind's actually coming through the garage, through these um, window openings that are that don't have a window in them, and just blowing the hell out of that home wrap. Right there, you can see I hand up the, the window, and then I go on the inside and shim it around. One thing about this kind of, this scaffolding is pretty narrow. So if you go up too high with it, you really need to um, tie wire it off to the building, um, which we did that quite a few times, where we would just wire it to the building to secure it. And also, you know, we'd have a top rail for a top, like he should have a top rail up there right now to for safety. But, um, yeah, we end up putting that on later, I guess. He's only about eight foot up right now. Right here, we're on the last rear window.
And it's the back is looking really good right now. That the the house wrap is sealed up really good. It's all most of it's all taped. There's a few spots we gotta check and tape, but for the most part we've been taping it, installing the windows and going through and taping and sealing the tie back up as we go. Now this right here is the second day doing the windows. We spent about six hours the first day and then and then we did about another six hours. So it took about 12 hours to install all the windows and doors and um, and also get the, the house wrap sealed up really good. So about 12 hours total with both of us. Now this last window on the back, I don't know what happened, but my GoPro actually got knocked over and died in the dirt. So I think this is the the last of my GoPro video. Here you can see he's siliconing all the bolt, all the screw holes and the little flange. And that's it for the rear of the house. Here's a shot with the drone. Here you can see the house wrap all wrapped up, all taped. You can see our, our roof with the fascia board. I'm attempting to fly this drone around the building, but there's trees all around this building, so it's not that easy to fly it around it. Right there you can see all the wrap and the doors. There's a side door and window. I do have some edge metal that I'm waiting for for the two rake-ins of my roof. Um, the, the original metal that I bought, I didn't like the look of it, so I had to buy a couple more pieces for the two rake-ins. Here you can see the whole back of the building with all the awning windows. I think that lo really looks good, actually. Let me know in the comments what you think. And there you can see the side. One window on that side. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe, like the video, ring the bell, and I will see you next time. Later.